Eight extremely lethal but creative aliens from the Men in Black franchise, explained in detail. The late 90s and early 20s were truly a phenomenal time for the comedy genre. One of the biggest testaments to this fact is the comedy science fiction franchise Men in Black. The story was originally created as a comic book series by Lowell Cunningham called The Men in Black, which was owned by Air Cell Comics, then Malibu Comics, and later bought out by Marvel Comics. The focus of the stories is a non-government organization responsible for monitoring alien and paranormal threats to planet Earth. While these men, dressed mostly in black suits and ties with sunglasses, protect civilians from said aliens, they must also make sure that the common people remain fully unaware of their existence. Most notably, these comics were adapted into a series of three films starring Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith, titled Men in Black, Men in Black 2, and Men in Black 3. Recently, a spin-off film, Men in Black International, starring Chris Hemsworth and Tessa Thompson, was released. Along with these four films, there have been several video games in an animated series called Men in Black the Series, based on the comics. All these have made us laugh and invest our time into the plot lines, to the point where we end up paying more attention to some aliens than Will Smith at times. So today, we take a trip down memory lane and recall some of the aliens we loved watching on the screen. Before we get into the explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click from you, but it means a lot to us. Thank you. Let's begin. Don't do it. Oh man. Edgar the Bug, Men in Black, 1997. We will start off our list with a main antagonist of the first film, Men in Black, 1997, an alien named Edgar. Hailing from a planet called Hive World, this alien cannot stand anyone harming bugs. While on Earth, this alien takes the form of a human, a farmer. Technically, it is this human who is named Edgar and not the alien itself. The creature's true form is at least 12 feet tall with fangs, six legs, and two antenna. Although it's supposed to be a giant cockroach, it does appear like a crossbreed between that bug, a scorpion, a praying mantis, a cricket, and a grasshopper. After the alien takes the farmer's body to use as a human suit, the farmer technically dies, but his outer body continues to move around with the extraterrestrial in control. The skin becomes saggy, almost falling off the body, and it soon begins to rot. It is Edgar's wife who first encounters him after the alien eats his insides and turns his skin into a cardigan, and she plays a key role in bringing this creature to MIB's attention. Was that your auntie? Oh, and that must mean that that's your uncle then, huh? Edgar's abilities include an insane amount of flexibility, advanced intellect, super strength, and some bug-like features such as the ability to stick to and climb walls and to secrete slime. After running amok all over town, visiting places that his alien license would prohibit, the creature is finally confronted by Agent J, Will Smith, and Agent K, Tommy Lee Jones, of the Men in Black organization. It sheds off its Edgar suit, revealing his grotesque true form, and eats both of the agent's guns so that they cannot shoot him. Agent K then decides to let the alien eat him so that he may be able to find his weapon inside the stomach. Even though K shoots the giant bug from within, splitting its body in half, it is not until later when a mortician shoots it again that it dies. In the recent Men in Black International 2019 film, Edgar the Bug makes a small cameo. A photograph of the creature hangs on the wall of MIB's London office next to photos of Agent J and K. These days... Alpha, aka Agent A, Men in Black the Series, 1997. Alpha represents the classic case of what happens when men with power turn evil. Formerly known as Agent A, he was one of the founders of MIB and served as chief until his greed overcame him. In his case, it was specifically the greed for the Cosmic Integrator, an alien device that can be used to fuse stuff together. This device was forbidden on Earth, and when the organization found out about Alpha's indiscretions, they kicked him out and left him to die. Before going rogue, Alpha asked Agent K to join forces with him, as he had been K's mentor during his initial time at the company. But Agent K refused, causing Alpha to shoot him in anger. After his banishment, Alpha roamed the cosmos and stole parts from the perfect aliens against their will. Then, using the Cosmic Integrator, he melded those parts with his own body and returned to Earth to destroy MIB. So it is, Kay. So it is. After several battles against Alpha, MIB failed to destroy him, but are able to finally do so after he climbs atop a missile heading towards Earth in order to disarm it. He does so, as he still wishes to take over the planet. But while the missile is still out of the Earth's atmosphere, Agent K and Agent J shoot it. Even after many years pass, Agent K lives under the paranoia that Alpha is still alive. As he went on collecting body parts of aliens in search for the perfect body that would be practically indestructible, Alpha started to look more and more menacing. 
First, he looked like a tentacle monster, except those tentacles each had their own kinds of weapons or defense mechanisms. Eventually, he barely looked human at all, resembling a cyborg made entirely of mechanized parts. Even his heart wasn't human. Alpha stole it from a race of aliens called Centillions. The heart was actually a living creature itself and had the ability to run about. In the animated series, Alpha's character is voiced by actor David Warner, while Agent K and Agent J were voiced by Greg Berger and Keith Diamond. Alpha has also appeared in the video game series titled MIB Crashdown. Hey, Serlina! Why didn't you say- Serlina Zath, Men in Black 2, 2002. Obsessed with the cosmic force known as the Light of Zartha that it wanted to use to destroy planet Zartha, Serlina is an alien belonging to a species called Kylothians. The alien is a snake-like creature that lives on Earth in the form of a model, played by Lara Flynn Boyle. After learning that many years ago, Agent K tricked it into roaming the cosmos in search of the Light of Zartha, it becomes furious and lands back on Earth with the intention of finding the Light but also of killing K for revenge. Soon, Serlina finds that the Light is a girl living on Earth named Lorana, who is in reality the Princess of Zartha. As it prepares to launch Lorana into space, K and J form a plan to destroy Serlina while protecting the girl. Whoever brings K to me gets Earth. Start by finding a denuralizer they're gonna want to get his memory back. Check. Fighting against Serlina, K and J are almost able to kill the creature a couple of times, but each time they do, it changes form. Its true form, it becomes a giant vine plant. The agents are able to kill it with a display of fireworks in the sky as it launches into space. Serlina is considered the most feared alien and even acts the part, appearing ruthless and apathetic. It also has a major appetite, never shying away from eating everything it can, human food or humans as food. <laughs> Boris the Animal, Men in Black 3, 2012 Boris, also known as the Animal, serves as the main antagonist of Men in Black 3 and is played by actor Jermaine Clement. It lives on Earth in human form, but is really from a planet called Boglodite. The animal is the last remaining of the Boglodites and is a wanted intergalactic criminal. Boris's story begins in 1969 when Agent K places it under arrest after having blown a hole through its hand. This hole is where Boris keeps its pet called Weasel, using its spikes to attack enemies. In 2012, Boris manages to escape a maximum security prison somehow and resolves to go back in time to 1969 so that it can kill K and save the Boglodite race. Agent J travels back in time after Boris in order to stop it from doing so. Let's agree to disagree. <laughs> the agents and Boris indulge in a game of cat and mouse, altering timelines of 1969 as well as 2012, but finally K is able to kill both versions of Boris in 2012 and 1969. Before he can, the animal uses Weasel's spikes to kill Jay's father, Colonel James. Boris remains defeated and the agents return to the current and correct timeline. Boris is shown as a relentless and cunning villain, and although its main grudge against Kay stemmed from the fact that he caused the extinction of the Boglodite race, Boris itself would kill both human and alien alike if they were to get in its way. The animal's true appearance is only shown for a few minutes in the film, but it is enough to make anyone squirm. It has a reptilian tongue and spiky claw-like fingers making up its entire body. It does not have any eyes or nose, but sharp fang-like teeth. The only way to tell if it's disguised as a human is if it has any slits in its hands or bulges on its forehead and chest. To make up for the lack of eyes, it is seen perpetually wearing dark glasses. The Hive, Men in Black International 2019 Coming to the last of the main antagonists of the films in the MIB franchise, we have The Hive. Its race was famous for merging their DNA with that of the species they conquered, and in Men in Black International, their target was planet Earth. Agent H, Chris Hemsworth, and High T, Liam Neeson, managed to stop the Hive from invading Earth using a wormhole located right above the Eiffel Tower back in 2016, but the former is unable to cope with the trauma of their actions. He barely clung on to his job at the MIB organization, forcing High T to use his sway in the company to convince their bosses not to fire H. It's me! In 2019, Agent H is seen working alongside a new partner, Agent M, Tessa Thompson, tasked with protecting Vungus the Ugly, a member of an alien royal family. Ugly is killed, however, by the twins, an alien species from Draco Constellation, and as the two agents track down the killers, they discover that the Hive has managed to convert High T into one of its own, right before the 2016 attack. In their quest to defeat the Hive once again and bring High T back to his former self, Agent H and Agent M find a way to separate High T's original self from the version of him that is fused with the Hive. After doing so, they use the small window of time to destroy the Hive, finally ending the alien once and for all. 
The hive appears as a giant being made up entirely of tentacles, thick and thin. It is described as a sapient species, like that of Predator's Yaucha. But unlike the Predator, Hive does not bear any semblance to humans. You? Jack Jeebs, Men in Black 1, 1997, Men in Black the Series, 1997, and Men in Black 2, 2002. Although the main villains from each of the films, as well as those from the series, have left their mark on fans, there have been other aliens in the franchise that may have only appeared as side characters, but did not fail to impress nevertheless. One such alien is Jack Jeebs, played by Tony Shalhoub in the films and voiced by Billy West in the series. Jeebs lives on Earth as a human pawn shop owner who sells a bunch of high-tech alien and human artifacts that are either stolen or illegal. He isn't the most trustworthy of associates and has the attitude of a ruthless businessman, but he is also wonderfully sarcastic and acts as a brilliant comic relief. In Men in Black 1997, we learn that Jeebs can regrow his head an endless number of times, although it is a painful process for him. The makers use this as a running gag, having Kay shoot up Jeebs' head whenever the alien annoyed him. In the animated series, we get some more insight into the character. It seems as though he does not require oxygen to survive like humans do, but he needs it in order to regrow his body parts. Another funny addition was a story Jeebs narrated about a time when he and his brother lost their heads together, and while growing them back, they got a little too close, which accidentally fused them together. Jeebs' final appearance is in Men in Black 2, where he is not seen as much, but we see his pawn shop destroyed during MIB's battle with Serlina. It is presumed the shop was later restored by Jeebs. Jeff, Men in Black 2, 2002 Jeff is a scary-looking alien who is actually quite adorable in retrospect. Yes, it is a 60-foot-long giant worm living in the subway tunnel with the ability to eat anything and anyone, but what about the super-cute flower perpetually on its head, which lets the MIB agents know its location? Not to mention, it is thanks to Jeff that we say bye-bye to the scary Kylothian Serlina, even if only temporarily. It is implied that Jeff has been working in harmony with the organization since it was an infant on the condition that they allow it to live in specified tunnels where it can gorge on inorganic waste. Getting big, Jeff. What would you be eating? During the climax of the battle against Serlina, the agents hatch a plan that lands the evil alien straight into Jeff's mouth. But much to their horror, Jeff rises, writhing in pain as Serlina not only manages to survive, but starts growing in size to the point where it makes Jeff's body explode, killing our scary yet adorable flower monster. Jeff's appearance is scary enough as it is, but when it opens its mouth, the view is even worse. It's like a tunnel that extends all the way down to its stomach, and yet there seems no end to the multitude of fangs. The teeth help Jeff break down the non-biodegradable waste that it eats, and we can only imagine the human minced meat that one would turn into if it was swallowed by the creature. Rewatching MIB as an adult puts it into perspective. Even though Jeff looks scary and can be dangerous when provoked, all it wants to do is live peacefully under a tunnel with a flower on its head and help save the environment by consuming all that inorganic garbage. Vangus, Men in Black the Series, 1997 For the last one on this list, we saved an alien that was defeated but never killed, Vangus, who appears in the animated series. Although the main villain here was Alpha, Vangus played a strong supporting role, acting as Alpha's aide in his effort to destroy Earth. Vengus belongs to a species of aliens called the Exions, who are desperate to get their hands on Earth's oil reserves, which are considered valuable in the galaxy. In exchange for giving it what it wants, Alpha asks Vengus to assist him with his plans. Although Alpha succeeds at destroying the MIB HQ, it does no good, and that leaves Vengus frustrated. Taking matter into its own hands, Vengus decides to destroy the planet altogether and get its hands on the oil after doing so. Vengus tries to stop Alpha from enacting his plan to rule the planet, and the two fight. Agent J uses Alpha's own weaponry to shoot both the villains, but Vangus is able to recover and sets off a missile that would destroy Earth. The agents shoot the missile with Alpha atop it, whilst it is still outside the planet's atmosphere, and Vangus's plan fails. This alien is a brown creature covered in fur and bone-like spikes extending from its body. Not much is known about its nature as it is a secondary villain, but from the events that unfold in the series, it is clear that although sometimes gullible and manipulated by Alpha, Vangus is determined to get what its species needs no matter what the cost. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone. Arrest me. Not this time.